first thought in the morning always be thank you and thank God. Okay? Your first thought in the morning anytime you open your eyes and you rise up from your bed, let it be thank you, God. Thank you for life. Thank you for the enablement. Thank you for the breath of life. Yeah, many just lie down there till morning. Even when the alarm, they themselves set, comes up, you know, activate itself that wake up or it's 5 a.m. Some could not even rise up. So anytime you open your eyes in the morning, the first thing you do is to say, Lord, I thank you. My great all thanks to you. So I want to say thank God for life this morning. Thank God for another opportunity. It's a beautiful morning, and I believe it's going to be beautiful till the end of today. Today, the 10th of October, to the 24th, it's another beautiful privilege, opportunity, and um, I don't want us to take it for granted. It's a healthy Thursday for us here on Galaxy Television. The program is Family and Values. Family and Values is a program that comes up on your screen from 9 to 10 a.m. every Monday to Friday on Galaxy Television. You can always join us on all our social media platforms on the National Digital Life Station 741, Star Times 110, AVO app. You can always get Galaxy on Oprah. You can get Galaxy. And um, I tell you, on Terrestrial, free to air. You don't need to pay any subscription. <laughs> so you can always find us wherever you go, wherever you are. And so I want to welcome you especially once again. If you're just joining us for the very first time, please make it a regular thing. And don't just make it regular, make it <laughs> meaningful anytime you join and look out for something that you can actually tap on. So today is a beautiful day and um, it's World Sight Day as well. So for many of us, we'll use Jiggy like this, I told you. <laughs> a lot of things will be coming up this morning. So I just wanted to sit back, relax and enjoy because today is going to be a beautiful day and i'm not here alone as you all know my darling beautiful sister is right here with me she's all smiling unfortunately she's not fair you'd have seen her blushing because that cheek is raising up how are you this morning i'm fine good morning to mm, you. well done how are you managing the weather uh, well okay <laughs> <laughs> answer me how are you don't leave me and you know yeah rather motto be said it <laughs> I tend to eat. Um, I'm I'll trying. I'm uh -huh. trying. Just you keep know, warm. You, you, Just keep anyway, warm. Today you really came normally now. Very sporty. Very uh, I need that warm it. Uh, but for <laughs> me, those of you that are expecting to see me come in with my t-shirt, you know, I'm not coming from the gym today. So today, healthy Thursday, excited to be calm. Now, <laughs> I'm glad we are talking about health because last night I had to take two rounds of injection. Hmm. You see? Imagine somebody very strong in the morning and at night the person breaks down. Your health is something that you don't joke around with. So I have learned not to joke around with my health. If somebody would tell me I would have to go through that process of being yesterday, yesterday mm. I would have said no. But when I go home, it was something else. And at this point, I said, no, stop being strong woman. <laughs> you need to go through the treatment process. So it's a good thing to be here this morning. Yes, good morning. My name is Princess Joy Ayo Abu, and it's Healthy Thursday on Family and Values here on Galaxy Television. Yeah, we're reaching out for the stars, and we're streaming across all our social media platforms. Like I used to say, download the Galaxy Mobile app so that you can watch us on the go. And you see these pretty faces, you know, it's time for Family and Values. But this morning, I'm not that happy, Lori, and I have like three stories that really got to me. First, I posted one on my status at Ayobo Junction. A young boy was caught. Maybe that boy should be around 17, 18. And he belongs to a syndicate that actually had people to death to take their kidney for 25,000 naira. How old did you say? Now, 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 you see, um, it's, it's actually a group where they kill. At Ayobo Junction, he said, he said, don't take to the junction, kill you and then harvest your kidney, sell it to a particular man for 25000 God. And they almost burnt the boy alive, but they were begging because they had put tires on him. And when somebody sent me, I was like, wait, it's my backyard here, like here, like very close to me. And he said it, it's been going on for a long period of time. And I was like, okay, for 25000 naira. A kidney. A kidney. <sighs> And I told the person, no, they need to investigate the person that buys the kidney. 
Like, how? I know. Somebody now told me, no, you're talking about, you're always, always talking about family and values. This is parental training. I said, calm down. Before you jump on parental training, before you start accusing the parents and this, you need to find out. How old did you say the boys? Uh, 17, 18. It's not even up to 18. Now. Maybe it should be around 15, 16, but I'm not sure it's up to 18. Now, yesterday, while I was on my way home, right inside the bus, waiting for, you know, the passengers to be filled up, the driver just heard that an NPC is selling fare for 900. Nine instantly, he increased his well, fare. I, yeah. And I was like, hello, <laughs> you've not gone, you've not even you've confirmed. You've not even confirmed. You've, you've not just gone to the filling station. Too. Saying it. And instantly, where I'm scared, I told him, no, it is the amount I paid. It may be tomorrow if I come, uh -huh, but this but one. This one. He was like, what well, I said, see, that's, that's we the cannot way start seems. harming ourselves. In the, you only heard, you've not gone to the filling station to confirm for yourself. We're, we're good at doing that. You're already increasing mm. it. And I was like, ah. Then somebody now sent me a story and said, You can talk about family and values. Also, talk about this one. I said, Okay. We have now, always, we have always. Is, according to her, she is a traditional practitioner. Okay. And that she had this three welding, I mean, these three men that came to do wealth in her shrine or something, something. And then they made money and went to church to go and testify that why are human beings living double life? Okay, when you when you come to that level of um, discussion, mm. I think it's a personal thing. It's a personal thing. It's a personal thing, and it depends on your own, you know, your belief, what you think. That's why I said it's a personal thing. And when we talk about family and values, we are here to remind to you, remind to you let you values. know, to educate you if you don't have any idea. Because we have many children who are now still parents. Mm -hmm. Okay? Those who are supposed to still be under their parents who They're are no now parents. parents. And um, they never took it upon themselves to wait for that time or did not even take the advice and the the, the, the knowledge the parents were ready to share with them and some never had parents to help them but that is why family and value is here to help to remind you bring it back to your knowledge to the understanding of those who don't have any preview about it those who have lost it you can always find a way back to the right channel if you have lost your way <laughs> you know the your people will say um, the dog that will get lost will not hear the whistle of his owner, the hunter. Because when the hunter, the parents, when they are telling you, listen, no, do this, so you are not truthful. You are not ready to walk. That's why you go for ritual. You are not ready to labor. You are not ready to be patient. And that is what we always bring up here on family and values. Then regarding the full in, uh, fuel increase hike, on PMS, we have talked about it. Remember, there was a day I was almost close to tears. Yeah, mm -hmm. I was sitting there yeah. where you were, and I was calling on our leaders. Yeah. You are all fathers. You are mothers. You are grandpas. You are grandmothers. Yes, if there is one thing you can even close your eyes to do, is to make sure our refineries are working. Mm -hmm. Dangote is ready to work. Work with him. Um, Joy is ready to refine um, the new one of the refineries let her work give her the opportunity and the privilege we have always been saying that and we even show our experience here what many will find you know many posts more than themselves when you see them on air but we come like we are to you anytime we come here i will tell you i took napep she will tell you she took um what is what is it you know so it's it's all about us trying to relate so when family and value is here for you, it's just to remind you, we'll continue to see our own. But God will touch your heart to do the right thing. And on that note this morning, because today is what side day, God will help our children. God will give them the ears and the understanding they need so that their ears, when it goes through the right, it will not come out through the left, it will go forth and do that which God wants them to do. And their life will be meaningful if a 17 or 18 year old is practicing such <laughs> that is what we are saying remember oh. what you said some time ago that um, if you are training your own child, child. 
Ah, my child went to the best university, went to the best primary and secondary school mm. so that she can be connected. He can be connected. We have heard, we have seen. We have seen girls, boys, who connect with friends and they will take the boy to a ritualist place and mm. use the boy. Friends, so Friend. in the same primary or secondary school. Your own child to so be good, right? you need to make sure that it is not just about we talked about know oh, their friends parenting, yes. we talked about know their friends oh, when someone oh we have show. lost that they are no longer doing it you're training your own child you don't know you're there. go and buy something go and do this they'll go and mingle look at anyway but god will help us we need to come back to the horizon we need to come back to the light the light is the truth. The light is being real. The light is not hiding anything from your children. The light is not making them believe all is well when nothing is going well for you. Because when you keep on pretending, they will also grow up to be pretending. Yes. You will not know what is going through their minds. So please, family of value is all about all this and much more. And we pray. You can go back to, you know, our uh, Facebook, uh, YouTube. You can go back to the X. Yeah, X, you can always get us live. We are live on X as we talk. You can always go back to every other episode on family and values. And please use those knowledge, those little experiences of life that we've shared. And it will go a long way. On that note, uh, today is a beauty day. And we have a very beautiful looking guest uh, in the house. So let's go for a mini feature. I will be right back. It's a healthy Thursday. Stay tuned. Welcome back. It's still family and values. And we're just starting up on a food, good food this morning with um, um, Happy World Site Day. Okay. Today, 10th of October, is a celebration and remembrance of everything that has to do with the site. And we have a doctor in the house. Okay. She's a pediatric ophthalmologist. And her name is none other than... Um, Dr. Alima, okay, Alima, I wanted to put Matt, okay, but I love the fact that it's Dr. Alima Alimi, can you see, Alima Alimi, hmm. it's so good to have you, Matt, good morning, it's so good to be here, nice to be here. welcome, Matt, Oh. I think it's just um, the two we, we've had another female doctor that uh, actually, you know, the day she came, I think Dr. Hazan, I think I've forgotten her name too. And I'm just admiring how it, how it got up and everything. Job and everything, you know. I have a tradition of picking something from my guest. I've been looking at your hand. What have you left this morning? Thank God, you cannot even take her I'll ring. I'll take her wristwatch. Uh, ah. Don't worry, there's always something I will pick. Don't worry, sir. Uh, <laughs> this baby is an expert. When it comes to helping people, good, stuff. definitely. <laughs> it's so good, good to have you, ma. Sure. Welcome. Thank you. So it's um, World Site Day, and um, what can you tell us about World Site Day? What um, what's the CS team, and why does it have to be celebrated? What can you brought about the celebration? Thank you. Thank you very much for taking time out to discuss what I am very close to my heart. Mm. <laughs> mm. So what I do is set out on the second Thursday of every October, in every October every year, by the International Agency for Prevention of Blindness. It's supposed to be a day set out, it has a theme, which we go all out to educate and let people know about how they can maintain eye health for those particular group of people under that theme. This year, the theme is very exciting to me. Mm. The theme is Love Your Eyes Kids. So that's my constituency, and so, and not a moment too soon. Children are vastly underserved. I say that all the time. Mm -hmm. If you think about community projects, community interventions, they're always for adults. You mm -hmm. hardly ever, ever hear about anyone dedicating an intervention to children. And so when I heard the theme for this year, I said, yes, very good, because it means everybody's going to be all out, talking about children's eye health. And so this is what it's really about. It's supposed to be action and advocacy for improved eye health in children. That's what it is, and today is the day. Okay, is it because you're a pediatrist that's why you're so so concerned about because that's your area, and so you, it's really <laughs> making you I've been feel into the rooftops all centuries <laughs> about children needing more attention, mm. you know, because the implication of having poor eye um, health in children is more far reaching than in an adult, mm. you know. We keep saying children are the future of tomorrow, we don't really think about it in the mm. proper context. If I have a child who is five years old and visually impaired, they have the whole lives ahead of them. 
so they can they can totally go to waste hmm. that's like what five or six decades gone yeah as opposed to a 65 year old who develops um, blindness really and truly i mean so everybody wants to live up to 200 but we're saying he's lived the most of his life to be practical yeah. and so there's the number of years that you can potentially waste for a human being and the attendant implication for that person for the family for society for the nation we should all be talking about children's eye health every day it's not really i'm hoping this sets a platform for it to really you know get the focus that it needs you know in our nation where children are vastly underserved i keep saying that every opportunity mm. we have. Okay. Thank okay. you, ma'am. Now, I love the fact that we are talking about children and their eyes because I think I'm one parent that has really felt that when it comes to children and, and the eye. Um, because I remember when my daughter was like a year old, um, she developed eye problems. Initially, they said put breast milk and we're adding breast milk, not knowing that we're damaging the eye. And at two, she had no choice than to start using glasses. In fact, the point will pad one eye to let the because the left eye was completely weak. She couldn't see, you know, went through a whole lot. It was expensive. I don't, something I really, you know, so I'm glad we are talking about it. But what steps can we take to adapt and protect children's eyes? Because if I knew what I knew now, I'm sure when she was six months when I started observing it, I will not go through, oh, put the breast milk so that to help the child, you know. But then I didn't know that this one is more than breast milk until she got to one so what are those steps we can actually take you know to protect the children's eyes especially babies you know like somebody that has passed four it was it's not i knew that it can actually be corrected mm. you know because they, we don't know and you, they just grow up it was later i knew that oh so this thing can actually be corrected you know so how do we, what are those steps to protect children's eyes right thank you for asking the question but let me just quickly tell you about the magnitude of the problem in itself because then we would really be listening mm. when we talk about prevention and treatment. So let me tell you that there are approximately, conservatively, 1.5 million blind children mm. all over the world. Mm. And I see this isn't bad enough. Every year, another half a million add on to the figure. Now, 80% of this figure is with us in Africa and Asia, in the developing world. And so um, if you divide this statistic by time, one child goes blind every minute so if this is a 60 minute program we're going to have 60 children added on to the already green wow. figures at the end of this program children who are not blind but do not have adequate vision for their functions mm. socialization education those are called visually impaired children now there are 19 million visually impaired children worldwide two-thirds of that figure it's just because they need a pair of glasses hmm. and again 75 to 80 percent of them are with us and so um i'm happy that you mentioned something that is really related to this you mentioned your daughter almost going to be blind in one eye and so the reason children are unique is because their problems are often hidden hmm. a lot of children are born visually impaired so they don't even know the difference they can't tell that something has changed so they're going to tell you oh all of a sudden i can't see well now Again, it's critical to have adequate vision for function. The brain of a child is very sensitive. And once the brain of a child figures that the eyes are not giving enough vision, or especially when one eye is, you know, a, we call it a lazy eye, yeah. one eye isn't giving yes, as much yes. input as the other, other eye. eye. What the brain does is to just give you some time to do something about it. If you don't, it just, it just totally ignores And just focus on the other and eye. continue to work with the good mm. one. Mm. And so the pathways that connect the eye to the brain just degenerate. Mm. And even when you come later in life to do the treatment, assuming you're even in time to treat it, it almost can never really catch up to that eye any longer. Very true. You can very true. It, very but it's true. lost that opportunity yes. to have connected. And that's also part of the reason why an eye may squint. So we're talking about different things now, all don't tied together. together. So if you have an eye that's a lazy eye, there's no impetus. The brain has no reason to work with that eye. Mm. And so it doesn't keep it aligned with the other eye that's working. And so that's why you find sometimes you see an eye turn in or out, you know, 
the hard fast one. We don't like. I don't like the news. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, 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 that's, that's a the general one. You know? I am a matter of fact, yeah. I'm thinking of going on a serious campaign <laughs> against it. About it. Against it yeah. So that's why people call names like that because one eye is straight, the other is it because the brain is not keeping that eye aligned. It's not mm. working with that eye any longer. Yes, it's treatable. It's treatable, but you need to catch it early. So perhaps now that leads us to the question you asked me, how can you prevent these things? And so there are a number of things that you can prevent. And that's why we stress, part of what we want to stress is regular eye checks. So you don't wait for a problem to show itself, even for adults. The most dangerous things are the quiet ones. Mm. Because they're just there, quietly wrecking havoc, and mm. you have no idea it's going on until it's a little too late. Mm. And so we want to be proactive, we want to check children's eyes and their vision from a very early age. Let's assume you're, you have a child, newborn, and has no complaints. Nothing is apparent to you that there's a problem. In spite of that, by the time that child is six months old, you should be taking that child to an ophthalmologist for an eye check. Because something might be going on and you do not know. Mm -hmm. Now, let's assume you don't do that. By the time the child gets to preschool age, definitely know the status of your child's eyes before you put them in school for the first time. Wow. Age two, three, nowadays, they're going to school. You must know, is this child normal-sighted, short-sighted, long-sighted, astigmatism? Some children have unequal eyes. We just talked about it. Hmm. So it may not be apparent to you, but it's there and the brain knows. Hmm. And the brain will reject that eye given time. Now, let's assume that if the child has other, there are certain features you see, right for at any age, you must immediately seek care. One, if you think the eye is squinting, you know, one eye, mm -hmm. the eyes are not straight, either one or both. Sometimes both eyes are squinting. Or two, if you think you can see something white in the, the black part the of the photo. eye, that's a cataract. And I'll tell you, it's not always a cataract. Mm. Sometimes that white in the eye can be a cancer. Oh my so God. A cataract will render a child blind. A cancer will kill the child, just a matter of time, if you don't recognize cancer. it. And so that thing that apparently looks whitish, sometimes yellowish, it might be glowing in the dark. We call it cat eyes reflex. Mm. If anyone sees it, immediately to the eye doctor the because you may be just be in time to save that eye or the child's life and then so things like that so screens cataract if your child's eyes are unequal you look at the child's eye and you feel hang on is one eye bigger than the other, than the other. An ophthalmologist. Oh. or if you think the eyes strike you as too large so we mm. all have a general sense of what size a baby's eyes should be if you think the eyes looking large bulgy hazy watering unnecessarily, whether it's one or both eyes, please see an eye doctor immediately. But if you think that as your child is growing older, your child is blinking rapidly, you know, or appears to be straining, or you get reports from school that say that this child copies very slowly, mm. or this child doesn't pay attention, seems apparently disinterested in academic work, mm. always sleeping in class, many of those children, people label as Olodu, mm. simply can't see. How many times have I seen short-sighted children? who are doing very badly in school. And then my favorite one is the one who, she couldn't see even the largest letter on the chart. And then, you know, a lot of abuse was coming from every direction, including her parents, idiot, silly girl, always sleeping in class. <laughs> That's a caution that this child can't see. And then she came for an eye check and she was a short-sighted child, very short-sighted. She could read everything with the glasses. One term later, no, I'm sorry, one session later, she was top of her class. Okay, um, I, 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 we need to go for a break. I remember what you said now made me remember Dr. Kevin Isibo. He said um, some students, uh, you named them um, Oludo, you, while many students actually fail or do not have good reports. It's because he mentioned something yeah, similar right, to what you yeah, just said, and it goes a long way. So it's time for us to go for our, our break right now, and we'll take the word on Marble. We'll be right back because Dr. Lima Alimi is still right here, and it's World Side Day. Stay tuned. If you're just tuning in, it's Family and Values, and we're right on Galaxy Television. Okay, we've been discussing with um, Dr. Alima Alimi. She's a pediatric ophthalmologist, and um, she's here. On the account of the World Sight Day, we are discussing how to improve your eyesight. And this year's theme is um, Eye Health in Children. That's for the World Sight Day. Okay, so, Doctor, thank you for 
you know, giving us all this knowledge about what we, we are not really putting into understanding. Especially to parents, we just name the children all kinds of name, all because they're not coming out with the best result as they expected. So, what are the common habits as we improve our eyesight, whether for an adult or for children? What are the common habits we need to practice that can help to affect our eyesight positively? Thank you for asking that. That's very important. So there are a number of factors that are sort of like lifestyle factors that we need to take into consideration to help our eye health. So I'll start by saying nutrition, very important, especially in you know, growing children. So I keep saying children need the proteins, not the adults. <laughs> so keep all the fish and meat and all the juicy dates for the, for the children. children. Because they need to, even mothers who are pregnant need to take a lot of these and fruits and vegetables because of the vitamins, because of development and mm. the eyes start to develop when the fetus is barely two millimeters you know, large. Mm -hmm. So protein intake, very important. So children need to have lots of vitamin A rich foods. Now let me stress that you shouldn't go to the pharmacy to buy vitamin A to take. You have a lot of foods that already have the you know, vitamin A you can take in adequate quantity because vitamin A, let me just warn, is a fat soluble vitamin and when okay. you take it you know, from the pharmacy, it, can, it will store in your body, it's not going to leave. So people keep taking it, it keeps accumulating, it can get to toxicity levels. Wow. And ironically, it affects the eye when it becomes toxic. Wow. Yes, the brain and the eye can make the brain swell, which can compress <coughs> on the nerve of the eye. And mm. so it's not a habit that anyone should be. There is a vitamin A intake that comes with certain immunization cycles. Mm. That's different. Mm. But to have a habit of just going to take vitamin A, cod liver oil and all of that, I want to absolutely discourage that. Instead, give nourishing foods. Foods like, you know, so your palm oil contains vitamin A. Don't mm. use too much of it though. Tomatoes, peppers, mango, um, your pawpaw, your, um, any of those orange and red, you know, colored color uh, fruits, fruits and like carrots. Watermelon. You know, they contain lots of vitamin A. Mm. They contain a form of it, and when it gets to the body, the body converts to vitamin A. That's safer mm. for the body. Um, fish is brimming full. Fish oil is brimming full. Of vitamin A, eat it naturally. Don't mm. go buy oil. <laughs> <laughs> you know, oh, it's the, better. Oh, the, so children like need to have all of this, you know, mm. in their diet. Um, and then, apart from mission, let, let's talk about um, hygiene. Mm. Because a lot of children have eye issues because the hygiene is not good enough, and they can have an eye infection. Mm. And an eye infection can actually potentially cause blindness if not properly handled. Check. And so, personal hygiene, environmental, you know, hygiene is everybody's business. You know, and so we need to stress this. That's another factor. The third factor is injury prevention. So mm. children play. That's just been part of childhood, isn't it? We want to encourage yeah. them to play. Yeah. But it has to be safe play. And so we need to caution children whenever we think they're in an environment that something might harm them or they're handling things that might harm them. And so naturally we, we say discourage sharp objects, things like knives, keys, you know, um, needles, pins scissors, how about the naturally sharp objects that they use yes, every, day? every day? Pencils, pencils rollers. And so we always need to caution children. Oftentimes you see a child holding onto a pencil and they're talking mm. or playing. Mm. You have to tell them once you're, it's not in use, put it down. Put it down. Because we see injuries with these sort of things. Yes, and everything. And while we're talking about injury prevention, let's all also caution on people who want to discipline children by hitting. Mm. So, because we, you see things like cataracts and glaucoma and all of that, because a child in the process of being disciplined was hit it's in the face and after. then it gets the eye. Mm. Sometimes they can actually go permanently blind from mm. this. We've seen situations like this. So these are things that we need to be careful about. Let's discourage children from fighting. It's a bad habit. Mm. And, you know, sometimes either the fighters or the good Samaritans who come, come in to get the eye the bad injuries. <laughs> and so we need to also oh caution about this. The other thing which we're talking about is screen use. So this is where people are uh -huh. very happy. Yeah. <laughs> screen right use, now, yeah. At this point, it's the single most important factor in making children short-sighted. Mm. So screen time is excessive for most children. Yeah. Um, the, the closer a child is viewing things to the face, the more short-sighted they're getting. Mm. The younger the child, the greater the impact. And so the, the world is heading towards a pandemic of short-sightedness. Mm. It's been said that the way the trend is going now, in by the year 2050, that's slightly over 20 years from now, half the world will be myopic at this rate, yes. Mm. So, and it, it starts from childhood. 
And so we need to drastically reduce how much time children are spending on near devices like phones, your tablet, your iPad, things that are close up to the face. Already we know that education is some of these children are using these devices educationally mm. when they come home and leisure, you know. And now <laughs> we I ask as a practitioner, when I for instance do surgery on children's eyes and I know they need to use medication, their medications are bedtime medications. So I want to know approximately what time, whether it will distort the normal time that I want to write as better. Mm. So I ask I, I take to asking parents, what time does this child go to sleep? The answers are shocking. Seven, eight, nine year olds are sleeping by 10, 30, 11 p.m. And I ask, what are they doing a week after Not, a, not impossible. Uh, they're playing games mm. that they've probably been playing since 6 p.m. Mm. You know, and so children are spending an excessive amount of time. There is a recommended time, you know, for screen use as considered safe. Um, for children less than two years, zero. No screen time, zero. For children, I'm talking about near screen. Mm. I'm not referring to yeah. a TV. Oh, TV. And the TV, they shouldn't be sitting, sitting close, close to the TV. They should start to be For children, two to six years old, one hour. Hmm. For children, a to day. 16, two hours. A day. Yes. So it seems to me they're already getting this in school. So ideally at home, there should be no screen time. Hmm. I, I see, you know, the, the screens have become babysitters as well. Mm. I see parents True. Mm. Their favorite mm. way to yeah, yeah to distract the children, just well. give it to them. Give it to you, know. you know, that's really destructive. We're seeing seriously short-sighted children now, and it's not short-sightedness. It's beyond vision. It's beyond saying that you can't see the board or see look up. It's they have health implications. Short-sightedness. The, the tendency to have glaucoma is higher if you're mm. short-sighted. You're also at risk for early cataracts. You're at risk for what we call macular degeneration. You're at risk for retinal detachment those four things and they are all potentially blinding oh my God. and not all of them have remedy cataracts you can operate <sighs> for others it can cause permanent blindness so really it's this serious business which is why i'm saying that you know oh we no. really need to be talking more about children now related to that is another measure outdoor play we need to increase the amount of outdoor play that children are getting hmm. because outdoor lights research has shown that the outdoor lights positively influences the eye and helps in reducing the amount of short-sightedness. Mm. The, there's a study of a school in, in Taiwan, they just added 80, they added 80 more minutes of outdoor activity. It's, it may not be play, it might even be educational activity, but it's outdoor, well, outdoor, you know, to some schools. And over a three-year period, it reduced the number of myopic children, the incidence of myopia by 50%. Mm. So it has an impact. And remember that when they're outdoors, they're getting exercise, isn't it? Hmm. So they're getting general well-being, physical and mental. Hmm. That also benefits the eye. And of course, the more time they spend outdoors, the less time they spend indoors with their devices. Hmm. And so there's a lot to be gained. But of course, I understand that it has to be safe. We understand that we have dangers outdoors, but you have to start and create a safe environment. So I think schools need to tweak with their curriculum to include more outdoor activities. I think even at home, if the environment is safe, we need to have the children more outdoors. outdoors. They're just indoors now on their screens. That's really damaging. And so <laughs> these lifestyle changes should help. Honestly, you know, this, this one needs to really go because children and I, like I said, I'm one person that really experienced, so I can really understand. But I want to quickly, I wanted to quickly address some myth that comes with eyes because when a newborn baby is born and you start seeing certain things, you know the elderly ones now, the ones in the village will tell you, I have been doing this. In fact, my mom was say, give direct breast this. You know, you're pouring direct breast milk into the eyes of a baby. And this thing is hot. And, you're, and they say to cure, you know. So how do we address those certain myths that come sweet? Especially children and eyes, those things. Sometimes you want to say, you say it's not a case of a doctor. Let's give this person head. Let's do this one. Okay. Mm. In fact, there was one, uh, one um, this in the blood. They say, open the child's eye, drop it. Into. How do we address all of this? Because later on, you discover that after all of this, these things are not working and it still falls back to the table of the this thing for you to now fix it properly through the this thing. Yes, thank you. That's a really fantastic question. Thank you. Now, there's no end to the list of things that people see in their eyes when they see an eye is red or discharging. 
So you talk about breast milk, there's honey, there's urine, there's battery water, there's diesel, Hi. there's petrol, battery there's, water. there's urine, you know, all sorts of things. <laughs> Salt, sugar, herbal medicines, other people's eye drops, you know, <laughs> there's mm. a lot of things people use. And these are potentially damaging to an eye, toxicity to an eye. As for the breast milk, where, thank you, the bacteria that caused it were happy because you fed them glucose. <laughs> A lot of children might go ahead and have a higher, you know, the, 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 the infection might scale up mm. if they're unlucky. But remember that the body has its own natural immunity. Mm. And so sometimes, the don't think the body isn't doing anything. The body recognizes that something that shouldn't be here is here. And so the body is fighting the, the, the organism itself. Mm. So sometimes it's the body's effort that actually cures the infection. Yeah, and people yeah. think, oh, it was that <laughs> red milk. Mm. 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 That was just going to give more sugar to the bacteria or virus to work with, mm. you know? And so we need to, part of the preventive measures that we need to talk about is avoid using home remedies. Like we call those home remedies, you know? Um, sometimes when a person has a red eye with a discharge, it's a viral conjunctivitis that sometimes let them to go it. away. If you just keep your eye clean, Sometimes when we see, we just give simple antibiotic, you know, eye drops if you think it's necessary, and you give the virus time to wear it, you know, to leave so out the lifespan between one and three weeks, and it's gone. But I'm not encouraging people to handle their red eyes at home. Just watch. Play safe and see a doctor, an eye doctor, to reassure you that oh, it's just a viral conjunctivitis, the popular Apollo, mm. and give you something mild if it's necessary. Sometimes when we see them, they're already resolving. Mm. It's already in the process of resolving. Mm. So we're just going to say, you know what, just leave it be. Sometimes we give you something mild. Please don't put all those home remedies because sometimes those are the causes of infection. The virus <laughs> itself wasn't going to cause the problem. So when you have toxicity, and we've had children with burns in their eyes because someone put acid hmm. or something acidic, hmm. you know. So all those urine, you can imagine the amount of bacteria in hmm. urine. Uh, and then you put it, you know, in because your viruses eyes. themselves don't cause a big problem. The major issue with viruses is they lower the immunity of the surface they are on allowing bacteria to join the party. Mm -hmm. The bacteria are the ones that can really wreck the havoc. And so that's why we give antibiotics. We don't give antivirals. We know it's not necessary. Virus mm -hmm. will die. It's, we don't want the bacteria in the mix. So when you take urine mm -hmm. and they pour it on the eye, you have just supplied the oh bacteria. My God. And so many children don't get away with this. We see them in the clinics. Sometimes they're lucky. It might resolve and leave a scar, which will distort the vision. Mm -hmm and cost, constitute a cosmetic blemish for the child. But more serious ones can actually totally lose that eye. Sometimes we've had eyes melt and bust. Hmm. Yes. So the only hmm. thing to do now is take out that eyeball because it's just going to become a bag of pus, which endangers the brain. So it can be that bad. <sighs> to take seriously. Wow. You know, I keep telling people that just out of God's mercy, oh God, we get away with our No, not honestly. Doctor, because, 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 because of our time. Because, because of our time, we are really, we are really, I want to know what you have planned for today as we celebrate the world. I know you're not just here to talk, yeah. but you have something programmed for today yes. with your um, association, the automotive Ophthalmologist um, Society of Nigeria. So, what do you have Everybody on ground to celebrate today? We need something. We're health educating. So, like, I have a health education um, program to do in some schools, you know, around today. the area today. Um, we also did some screening and treatment for children in the community uh, health district to, um, about three weeks ago. We're giving okay. them the classes today, okay. over 200 of them. So, we hope that 200 more children can get out of visual impairment today. And then we also have a, a sort of art competition. We've asked task children in some school to just make artwork, hashtag love your eyes kids. So we're going to judge the best ones, we're going to give them prizes, but we will give them education. Education, people need it. Indeed, I tell parents, learn something about the eye because you need to teach your child from a very young age. We underestimate children's capacity mm. to learn. They were very young age, start telling them about the importance of the eye, all they need to be doing, and they will hold on to those lessons. And I tell parents, give your children regular eye checks because that will determine how they handle you in future remember one day they, they might be in charge of your health issues no so what you're doing is what they will do because they get used to you they take lessons from there let me also say and this is very important that it's everybody's business to make sure we find children with visual impairment 
So there's a simple way, and both the states and other NGOs have been doing this, going to school to teach teachers and leaving them eye charts, simple. Just tell you where to put the child and what line the child should be able to see. It's very easy. Something schools should enact policies that every year or twice a year they sit their children down or up somewhere in a corridor and test everybody's vision. Hmm. So that way, that's the easier way, the most effective way to get out those children early and send them for eye care. That's absolutely important. That way you find many of those children with seeing with one eye and not the oh, other. The child who was apparently doing well in class, you suddenly find out, oh, he was only using one eye after all. Mm. So you have a chance to save that you know, eye. And so early checks, and then we need to encourage parents to please the patients. People say, oh, I go to the office, there are so many people there. And I said to them, if they have invited you to come and take a million naira, you will queue for 24 hours. And they say, yes. I said, but this child's eye is more valuable than a million. At least I think so. So I think parents need to be patient. Don't think about the day you're going to miss out on the market or at work. Please dedicate that day. We know we're many now. There are 200 million of us in Nigeria. So if you go to the hospital, you're going to find a lot of people. Mm -hmm. You know, we don't have enough personnel. We still have less than the ideal ratio of doctor to patients in this country. So you have to be patient. There'll be a crowd, but you know you're there for a good reason. You know, just reassure yourself. You don't have to do it more than once a year. You okay. Know, routine check. Okay, routine check. doctor, can you just, um, do you have uh, a toll-free line or an email or how can we get to the ophthalmologist um, mm, okay. um, society um, of Nigeria let, let me just say if we if want to contact? Up, yeah. If you Google up ophthalmological society of Nigeria Lagos branch, you would get the information. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, Thank you so I much. I, I'm sure I'll be inviting you very, <laughs> very more yeah. to enlighten us because yeah. our time is far spent right yeah. now. Absolutely. We cannot How do everything. Yeah. You know, we cannot finish yes. everything Absolutely. today. So we are so glad you could make it Thank and we're you. so Thank happy. You. We wish you and your association the very best. Um, Thank good. You Thank so you much. to say hi to Dr. Shado. Okay. Uh, big shout out from Galaxy Television. We love you and we appreciate Thank you so you much. So that's actually spoke to me because when something is personal, you will not you will understand better. You know, when you have a child who has issues with the eyes, and then you run and spend so much, you understand the need. When you hear free eye check or how you jump on it, some of us just feel mm, what's that? There is a whole lot to under. You just don't worry. So anywhere you hear free eye check, or please go and take care of your children's eyes. It's very, very important. That's all I'm going to say. Thank you very much for being a part of Family and Values this morning. We'll see you tomorrow. My name is Terry Man, Princess Joy. Are you okay. Okay, as you have your great thoughts there, remember tomorrow is going to be another wonderful opportunity for us to talk, to discuss, to share, to relate. <laughs> Please. Train your children, give them the best. I'm not saying you should go out of your way all the time. It's for them to know how things are going. Who were we with some, some, someone yesterday, the first day? That your children need to know what you're, you're going through. No, not, no, so, Michel, it's, it, you don't just give them a level ground all the time. It's to prepare them, it's to build their mm -hmm. mind. So that when you are not there, I'm not saying you are dying early, but what I'm saying is there will be a time you will not be there for them and they will be able to send and remember as home, call them home to call place. Them. So tomorrow is going to be another wonderful day as we'll be discussing understanding siblings. How well do you understand your siblings? No. Even now that they are all gone, how well do you argue? You still come back, communicate, and relate, and you know, come back. So, we'll be talking about tomorrow. I hope uh, the day comes brighter for each and every one of us. And I wish you the very best of today. My name is Remain Ulrich Adejoki Adam David. See you tomorrow on behalf of everyone that we have run today's show together. Thank you so much. We love you and like, share, follow us. God bless you.